Hello, welcome to this special edition of Indonesia Now from Jakarta. I'm Dalton Tanonaka. Selamat berjumpa lagi. I'm Valdia Baraputri sitting in for Marisa Anita. Thank you for joining us and a special welcome to our viewers in Semarang. In this program, we celebrate some of Indonesia's success stories, ranging from visionary entrepreneurs to historic business. That is right, and we begin with a visit to a coffee shop in Jakarta that survived and thrived in a very competitive industry. Indonesia Now's Zelda Safitri takes us to where beans have been brewed for 135 years. It opened as a restaurant in 1878. But soon everyone was coming for its coffee, and Warung Tinggi began specializing in the beverage and beans. The name means high shop, originally built on an elevated area in Jakarta's Chinatown district. It's now run by fourth-generation family member Rudy Wijaya, not far from the original location picked out by his great-grandfather. Yeah, Macamnya kopi di tangan saya, saya udah nggak khawatir. Yang mana ada yang kekurangan, saya bisa di sili berganti ya. Warung Tinggi sells eight types of coffee blends, along with the highly prized and priced kopi luwak. Its reputation as the oldest coffee shop in the country draws regular customers and curious visitors. The reason why we came here is that some of our friends have told me that uh, this workshop is very nice and uh, we can get some real coffee uh, from here. We've just tried uh, this kind of coffee. Uh, strong, yeah, strong flavor, yeah. Saya langganan ke sini itu dari tahun 76. Salah satu warung kopi atau penjual kopi yang paling tua di Indonesia dan menjaga kualitas lah. Jadi kalau ngasih ke orang itu bawa nama baik Indonesia. Revenue hits 180 million rupiah a month, or nearly $20,000. Owner Wijaya says he'll keep doing what he does even in the face of strong competition from international franchise brands such as Starbucks. He hopes to expand his operations outside of Jakarta and is training the next generation of Wijaya's daughter Angelica to carry on the family business. Zelda Savitri, Metro TV, Jakarta. From Chinatown to Central Java, where dentist is making music to ease the pain of the time in the chair. Indonesia Now's Tommy Chokro reports on how technology is keeping kids and their parents smiling. Treating nervous kids is a challenge for dentists around the world. So Dr. Danny Gustiana got creative with his hardware. Six years ago, he began modifying his equipment to make the office business more child-friendly. He replaced metal parts in his drill with ceramic to reduce the scary noise and attached an MP3 player to what he now tells his young patients is a singing dental drill. Dr. Donny also put the face of a puppet character on the head of his drill serving to muffle the sound and to relax the children. This innovative dentist says the equipment modifications cost 6 million rupiah in all, or $630, and has copyrighted what he's done. And in case you're wondering, yes, adults can also ask for the music and puppets when getting their dental work done. Tommy Chokro, Metro TV. There's been considerable market concern about the weakening of the rupiah since the year began. Here's the quick rundown of the week's numbers.
this Indonesia Now special will continue shortly. And when we continue, visionary advice from the country's top entrepreneur, Erajaya's Buriarto Halim, next. You are watching an Indonesian Now special from Jakarta. We are spotlighting the country's success stories, big and small. Many winning ideas started simply. Budi Arto Halim watched people line up outside the telecommunications company he worked for 17 years ago, paying, can you believe it, $1,700 for a clunky handphone. So he started his own business, and now Erajaya Swasembara is the country's leading mobile phone provider, selling every major brand. But he started small. With a small retail shop in the Grogor area, it's about, about 40 square meter with about uh, six to eight people. Uh, the time is very small scale. Uh, this time, as of today, after we listed our shares in stock exchange last year in December uh, 13, uh, 2011, we have more than 4,000 people, headcounts in the company. We have 365 uh, retail stores. We also have 91 distribution centers catering to more than 20,000 key accounts. So our revenue at this time, the last year, hopefully we can reach to about 13 trillion rupiah. What were some of the products you in either introduced or popularized through your company? Actually, we are the distributor for uh, mobile products for almost all the international brands. We carry about 11 brands and also one local brands. So, uh, all not exclusive, but? Uh, some are exclusive, but uh, exclusive by region, exclusive by country, uh, exclusive by product. So there's a lot of uh, contracts that we have. Do you have a business philosophy or have you had one from the beginning or has it changed? I think our philosophy is more uh, trans, uh, translated to our company uh, corporate values, core values. So first of all, it's very important to have the integrity. That is our most important philosophy. In dealing with? In dealing with all the stakeholders. I mean, we have uh, integrity is uh, uh, for us uh, to, to win in the business is very important, of course, but uh, so far our our uh, success is built with integrity as the foundation. So in your suppliers as well Supplier, as your customers. As the customers and also the stakeholders, our business partners, our customers, dealers. Our because customers. it's a competitive and kind of cutthroat uh, business. Yes, yes. Everybody's fighting for a piece of the pie. Yes, that's right. So um, I think now integrity, we need that to build a long and tr uh, trustworthy relationship with the business partner because this is not a short-term business, this is a long-term business, so we need to build the trust. From 300 or so outlets now, where do you want to be in five years? How big do you plan to be? When we listed our shares, it's a new milestone for our, our company. It's just a new start, it's not, the, it's not the end. It's a new start for us. So if, we, uh, if I can divide our company into, there's two major parts. One is the distribution part, and one is the retailing part, retailer. For distribution, we only have 91 distribution centers. And you know Indonesia has more than 17,000 islands. Of course, it will depend on the den population density. Uh, and we need to expand this because we want to reach to the end customers. We don't want to go to a lot of layers of distribution. So it's not the end, it's just started for us. We still have a long way to go. What advice can you give to a young entrepreneur watching this and saying, I want to be like him? Uh, what can you tell them? What would you advise them? I think there is a saying that uh, never rest on one roller. I think most people are satisfied with what they have achieved. So for us, continuous, I, I would say that you have to continue searching for innovation and better ways to do things because the business environment is very dynamic, it keeps changing. You will not be there forever. You need to sustain that, maintain that by improving every day.
vision and talent, Holland was recently named Entrepreneur of the Year 2012 by the professional services firm Ernst & Young. He will now represent Indonesia in international competition in Monte Carlo in June. More success stories are on the way. When this Indonesian Now special continues, the princess of iPod. Why these young ladies are much more than cute. This is an Indonesia Now special spotlighting the country's success stories. And we're coming to you from the Jakarta studios of Metro TV, Indonesia's election channel. One of 2012's biggest movie hits wasn't an action or horror film. Habibi and Ainun was about Indonesia's third president. Yes, but it was mainly a love story between devoted partners against a backdrop of history. Marisa has this review. Ainun. Habibi and Ainun is something new in Indonesian Rudy. cinema, a film that depicts a real president not as an icon or a superman, but as a human being. Here we see Habibi as a passionate, vulnerable and sometimes flawed man whose love for one woman is the most important part of his life. <laughs> Based on Habibi's biography, this film is packed with authentic details of the third president's life, from early childhood to his struggles as a young engineer in Germany. Then came his return to Indonesia and his tumultuous time as a minister and president. On this level, it's a nice slice of recent Indonesian history. Hal-hal yang positif yeah. dikombin dengan cinta itu akan menjadi sebuah kekuatan yang luar biasa. Nah itu sekarang menurut saya adalah sebuah bukan apa ya, bukan sekedar fairy tale, bukan sekedar mimpi gitu. But it's real gitu. Dan itu sudah dibuktikan lewat kisah uh, yang Habibi dan uh, yang Putri Ainun. Jadi buat saya itu very inspiring story sih. Even for myself ya jatuh. But the heart of the story is always Habibi's love for his wife, Ainun. It's a touching, funny, and tragic story that has left many audience members in tears, including the current president. Reza Rahadian is magnificently believable as Habibi. He's not physically similar to the former president, but Rahadian channels Habibi's accent, gestures, and mannerisms so well that at times you feel you're watching the man himself. Cuma pertama kalinya saya sadar bahwa saya jalan begitu dan berbicara demikian dan yeah. gerakan semua itu kecuali uh, ketika cucu saya yang sedang berlibur saya bawa ke Jogja mm -hmm. dan dia dampingi melihat Risa di syuting. Mm -hmm. nah, cucu saya itu umur 4 tahun, yang satu umur 8 tahun yeah. dan mereka waktu lihat itu Risa berjalan dan berbicara dia bilang, "Eh, itu like lu, you." Bunga Citra Lestari is a wonderful Ainun, and her chemistry with Reza lights up the screen. Their restrained, intelligent, and truthful depictions of Habibi and Ainun are the must-see performances of 2012. They will definitely be leading contenders for upcoming acting awards. In only two weeks after opening December 20th, more than three million people had seen the film, and it's still being shown in theaters. I haven't seen it yet. I will soon. Okay, sure, you have. From pop culture to pop stars, a musical success story now involving five young women who are at the front of the iPop movement. Producer Kevin Aprilio was the creator of Princess, which combines the catchiness of the Korean music wave with Disney. <laughs> The dance music, but 
it has also like a Disney touch, like a more fantasy touch. So we have the dance, but we also have like the strings for the music and the orchestra and stuff like that. J-pop, Japanese girl groups are they, they, they are young girls. That's their image. K-pop are more women. They're, they're, they're sexier. They have a sexier image. What I call you, I-pop ladies. What are you trying to be? Well, we're trying to set an image that is uh, more too graceful, but but not not mature, not like sexy, womanly mature. But we're not childish and that cutesy, sweet image as well. But we're trying to set the image that we're graceful ladies, like princesses. What makes you different from other girl groups that have come out of Indonesia? Our concept. Everybody compares you, I'm sure, right? Yes, yeah. of course. I won't, I won't mention their names. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> you don't have to mention. Uh, our concept is uh, Kevin Aprilia, our producer, our one make our concept. Uh, as, uh, our concept is Elgan and girly uh, beauty concept, uh, not too childish like Alice Castile. And we target to the middle. So this is our concept and really so not cutie. So what is your five year plan? Last question. Where do you think you guys will be in five years? Uh, maybe Kevin will spread us I uh, have a new plan to spread us in uh, our self ability, our talent, yeah. like Alika maybe sing singing, soul singing. Me, Anna, Elma, or Daita make a acting in movie, a presenter. The five young ladies of Princess, I want to give you their names, Elma Augustine, Anna Octorina, Rachel Octavia, Danita Sigarlaki, and your cousin, actually, Alika. Yeah. Isla Madina. She's my favorite. Okay. <laughs> I wonder why. Okay, we appreciate getting your feedback. Ropen tweeted this, no class today, yet I learned English this morning, and it's free. Thanks for watching, Ropen. April had this Twitter comment, nice program, really love it. We love it that you love it, April. <laughs> and here's our video email of the week. I wish Indonesia now can have like more egg time, and maybe Saturday and Sunday, that will be awesome. Hi, Putri. Would love to spend more time with you on the air, of course. For now, we're on once a week. Send all your comments, questions, and story ideas with name and city to IndonesiaNow at MetroTVNews.com. Our webpage can be found at www.MetroTVNews.com slash IndonesiaNow. Also, check us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. If you need a guide to weekend events or where to eat, we have an option for you. And that would be the weekend edition of the Jakarta Globe, the award-winning English language newspaper. Provides colorful choices for your leisure time. It, of course, has the important news and interviews of the day. You know, if you don't have it delivered and can't find it on newsstands, there's the internet option. Go to www.thejakartaglobe.com and there you will find the same content. And that would include your monthly columns. It does, and this month I again plead with President Yuriono, oh. sir, for a sit-down interview in English. Now, this would be my third open letter to SBY in six years. I'm hoping maybe this time he will say yes. Of course. Yeah, well, Absolutely. we hope. Absolutely. All right. And that is our Indonesia Now special. Thank you for watching. I'm Dalton Tanonaka. Terima kasih. I'm Valdia Baraputri. Enjoy your weekend, and see you next week.